Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to Morse Code. I do tech reviews and tutorials, so if you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you've come to the right place. Today we are discussing one of my favorite little devices for securing your online accounts. These are called hardware keys. Now before I get started, I did want to thank this episode's sponsor, the Innovation Program. Innovators are some of the breakthrough names in technological innovation, born out of the Innovation Program founded in Japan. They have a mindset to continually undertake challenges without fear of of failure, creating answers to today's problems. These innovators are graduates of the Innovation Program's Disruptive Challenge, which is an annual program that was started in 2014 that takes all of the weird and wonderful ideas that folks come up with, and they help make those ideas into a reality. The program is now global, open to anyone anywhere in the world, regardless of where you live. So keep an eye out for the next application period coming this summer, especially if you have an idea that you want to see come to life. This month, I have have been featuring a new innovator and an innovation in a series of videos so you can see some of the cool and interesting ideas that have become a reality. New innovators and innovations are featured every single week on the Innovators YouTube channel as well where you can learn more. The reason why I think this is so cool is because these are such a neat mix of science and technology with some of the topics including AI, robotics, green energy, ICT, gadgets, and there are even interviews and more coverage over on their website and the channel. Innovators are exploring the world of the future, and you can too. Want to learn more? Want to be an innovator? Subscribe to the Innovation YouTube channel and check out their website over at innovators.com en to see videos, profiles, and interviews about some of the current graduates and learn more about the program itself. Thank you so much to the Innovation Program for their support of my channel. So what are these little devices? What are hardware keys? These are 2FA hardware tokens or USB dongle authentication keys or physical 2FA keys, universal second factor devices. No matter what term you choose, these give you a second factor of authentication that you have to use in order to get into your accounts. So first you would use your username and the password, and then you would have to have one of these in hand, which you would plug in and press a button down on to log into your account. So why does this matter? Well, having just a password is okay, but it runs the risk of being brute force, stolen, or hacked. So having a second factor to log in adds more protection to online accounts. Just having something you know, like your password, can be so much more protected with that secondary authentication, be it something that you have or something that you are. So that could be your password plus a pin or a biometric like your fingerprint, which is something that you are, a special code sent to your phone or sent to an application, or in this case, a hardware token, which is something that you have. So why are these the absolute best? Well, hardware tokens are the utmost in protection, but they are not as convenient. Hardware tokens must be present in order to log in. So your account could not be hacked remotely unless an attacker had access to this little device, as well as your username and your password. So that makes it super hard to get into your accounts, but they also are not as convenient as just getting a code sent to your phone. So you probably have your phone, your smartphone on you all the time. But if you leave this little hardware token in another room, you would have to go get it and humans are lazy. So a lot of humans just don't use these devices, even though they are the best of the best. If you use a pin, that could be figured out, especially if it's something like your birth date. If you use a code sent to you via SMS, that could be stolen via SIM swapping. Watch my video about SIM swapping for more information about how that happens and how you can protect yourself from it. If you use a code sent to the app on your phone, your phone could be stolen or lost, and that could lock you out of your account. Now, these hardware tokens could get stolen too, but if some random thief is stealing stuff from you, like if you're riding on the Bay Area Rapid Transit like I used to, <laughs> they will likely tell you to give them your phone, not a flash drive that looks like it's not worth anything. And these, honestly, like if you didn't know what these were, they don't look like they're worth anything. They just look like little plastic flash drives. So when I choose how I'm going to log into an account, I do a risk assessment. My email account is connected to a lot of things like my bank and social media networks, etc. So that would be a huge headache if that account got hacked. So I use a hardware token for my 
email account. If I have to log into a news site or a site that I use to add Instagram filters to my photos or a language learning app or something that is not connected to anything else, then I'm not necessarily going to use a hardware token since if that account got hacked, it would not be the end of the world. So what happens if you lose your device or if it gets stolen or you forget it at home? Well, luckily, Luckily, most sites that are set up correctly and accept these as an option for two-factor authentication will allow you to download backup codes. These are usually eight to 10 different codes that are mapped to your account that you have access to whenever you set these up. So you simply have to find your backup codes on your online account, print them out or download them and store them safely in a secret location, a secret location that hopefully you will not forget about because I've seen people where that's happened. Like a friend forgot their and then didn't know how to get back into their account. That could be like a bank deposit safe or a fire or waterproof safe in your home or a really, really secure encrypted storage container on your computer or stored in a completely separate location like a trusted individual's house. Whatever works best for you, just make sure that you have access to those backup codes in the event that you lose this thing. And that brings me to these ones in particular. These are the Google Titan security keys. Even though they look different. Like I have another one here that's USB-C. Ta-da! Even though they look different, they all do the same thing. They can be used as a second factor for authentication. So you can get one or two or three of them and you can mix and match and get whatever ones work best for your devices. They come in a few different implementations and prices range from $25 to $40 or $50 for a bundle. You can get either a Bluetooth NFC USB one, a USB-A and NFC one, or the USB-C one that I have here. Here. There is no lightning version, but the Bluetooth and NFC versions do work for the Apple devices as well. And you can also use a USB to lightning adapter to plug this thing directly into your Apple device. So they are cross platform. The Bluetooth one can also be plugged in via micro USB to charge it also for authentication. So for me, if I wanted to log into my private Google account, my Gmail, I would first put in my Gmail username, then my password. And then my account says that I need to use my U2F token to sign in. So I have to plug in one of these hardware keys and then press it down. My phone or my laptop recognizes it and it lets me log in. Alternatively, I could get a code texted to my phone number or I could authenticate with a code sent to my special app on my phone if I set up those options as backups for my Google account. Now that is a great option if you might lose one of these, but it could also open up your account to things like SIM swapping. So how do they work? Well, Google Titan security keys can be used for second factor authentication like I've mentioned, on any website that supports the FIDO U2F standard, which is an open standard that a lot of websites use in order to make these things compatible with a bunch of brands. They were engineered by Google and they use Titan M security chips and Titan security keys also work with Google's advanced protection program as well, which I can do a separate video about if you are interested. There are a bunch of websites that use USB dongle authentication. And in fact, you can see a list over at dongleauth.info. And you can also check 2FA.directory to see if sites support 2FA in general, as they also include information on hardware tokens. See, the nice thing about these devices is that you can use them on multiple websites. If you have more than one account on Google or a Gmail account, then you can also protect those with the same Titan keys. You don't have to buy a separate one for each and every single account that you want to protect, which is great. Now stick around in a few seconds, I will show you how to set up one of these on an online account. To add a Google Titan to your Google account, log into your Google account. I am using the Chrome browser in this example. So I would click on manage your Google account and then go to security, then scroll down to two factor authentication and log in with my username and password. If you already have 2FA set up with a code or using your phone as a key, follow the prompts to get into the 2FA settings page. Then you scroll down to where it says security key. Click USB or Bluetooth external security security key. If you are on Windows like I am, a Windows security window will pop up asking for user interaction. So read the prompts and then just click OK. You will need to plug in your USB key and then touch it when the Windows prompts you to do so. Then you will get confirmation that it's registered and you can name your key. So I name mine like after the Avengers. 
kind of cute. Click done, and then you can download your backup codes from the same page, add another security key, or you can delete or revoke ones that you don't use anymore, or if you lost one. And yes, all of these phones that I have on my account are in my possession. So this is actually accurate. I didn't forget about them. These are all different phones that I have within my vicinity. So it's okay, don't worry. Setting up all the Google Titan keys works exactly the same. So it doesn't matter whichever one you choose to set up first. Now, once set up, anytime you want to log into your account on a new device, you will enter your username and password like usual, and then your phone or your PC or your tablet or whatever will prompt you to plug in or press on your U2F security token, and you will see confirmation that it worked. It's easy, it's a painless process, and if you have one of these on you, then I think it's faster than typing in a six-digit 2FA code every single time I want to log in. And then you just tack on a password manager that autofills your username and your password for you, and you never Never gotta type in anything to log in. It's great. Now, my question for you is, do you want to see a similar video about YubiKeys from Yubico or also a video about Google's advanced protection program? Leave me a comment below if interested and shout out to all my s'mores who support the show, whether you subscribe or if you're a patron, I appreciate everything that you guys do to support this channel. Thank you so much. I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you soon. Bye y'all. Suki, leave her alone.